Hello, this presentation is on realising the potential of wearables for health monitoring. It's a recording of a presentation given previously. The original slides are available at the link below and they contain a few more pictures than this version. Cardiovascular disease accounts for over a quarter of deaths in the UK. During this talk, cardiovascular disease will cause three hospital admissions, five deaths and cost the NHS £250,000. The growing use of wearables provides opportunity to assess cardiovascular health in daily life and potentially reduce the burden of cardiovascular disease. Indeed, it's expected that in two years there will be over one billion wearables globally. Most wrist-worn wearables, which monitor heart rate, do so by measuring the arterial pulse wave, which contains a wealth of information on the heart and blood vessels. Potentially, this signal could be used not only for heart rate monitoring, but also to provide additional information, including the heart rhythm and other vital signs, such as blood pressure and respiratory rate. To introduce myself, my name's Peter Charlton. I'm a bi biomedical engineer based at the University of Cambridge and at City, University of London. I work alongside clinical colleagues, such as those at St Thomas's Hospital, shown here, to develop signal processing techniques for wearables, which could be used for clinical decision making. In this talk, I'll provide an introduction to using consumer wearables for health monitoring. I'll provide an overview of the development of wearables, then highlight potential clinical applications of wearables, demonstrating how they could be used to improve health outcomes. Finally, I'll highlight next steps to ensure wearables can be used to inform clinical decisions both safely and robustly. So, the development of wearables. The development of wearables has taken place in two arenas, clinical and consumer settings. Clinical wearables have been primarily focused on ECG monitoring to diagnose heart problems. Holter monitors entered production in the early 1960s, allowing ECG data to be recorded for retrospective review. By the late 1960s, data from wearables were transmitted from the Apollo missions back to Earth for near real-time review. This approach began being used on hospital wards in the 1980s for real-time ECG monitoring. Since then, some wearables which monitor oxygen saturation have entered use. In contrast, consumer wearables have been primarily focused on activity tracking and heart rate monitoring. Also in the 1960s, pedometers for counting steps became available. Heart rate monitors became available in the light late 1970s in the form of a chest belt. These are designed for ECG based monitoring during exercise. In the early 2010s wrist worn devices became available which could monitor heart rate at the wrist without the need for a chest belt. Looking back the same sensing technologies have been used in both settings for different purposes. There are three key sensing technologies used here. Firstly, electrocardiogram monitoring, or ECG for short. The ECG is a measure of the electrical current generated by the heart each heartbeat. It is acquired by measuring the voltage difference between two points on the body surface over time. Traditionally, it has been measured on the chest close to the heart. Recently, chest patch devices have been developed which measure the ECG between two electrodes in close proximity. In addition, wrist-worn devices have been developed which can measure the ECG between opposite arms. The ECG can be used to diagnose a range of heart conditions. Secondly, photoplephysmography, or PPG for short. The PPG is a measure of changes in blood volume over time in a bed of tissue. It's usually acquired by illuminating the skin with an LED and measuring the intensity of light either transmitted through or reflected from the skin. The PPG is widely measured by pulse oximeters at the finger, but many wearables now measure it at the wrist. The PPG is used in wearables primarily for heart rate monitoring, 
but can also be used to assess oxygen saturation and several other parameters. Thirdly, accelerometers are used to detect and quantify movements. Accelerometers measure acceleration and are widely incorporated into wearables as they are cheap and consume little power. Accelerometry can be used to count steps, identify falls and as a reference motion signal with which to either identify or remove the effects of motion from other signals. The functionality of wearables is mainly determined by their sensor technologies and the algorithms used to derive parameters from the sensor signals. This table summarises the functionality of a few selected consumer wearables. Most of these wearables use the PPG for heart rate monitoring, but fewer identify an irregular pulse. Recently, many wearables have incorporated oxygen saturation monitoring. Other PPG derived parameters, such as respiratory rate and blood pressure, are not yet commonly provided. Simultaneous PPG and accelerometry signals can be used together to assess sleep patterns and parameters related to exercise and fitness. All wearables considered provide a step count from the accelerometry signal. Some have additional sensors, such as an ECG sensor, a barometer to measure elevation, which can be used to identify stair climbing, and a thermometer providing temperature. This demonstrates the wide functionality of consumer wearables. Since consumer wearables are becoming more widely used, there's potentially opportunity to use their data for clinical decision making. So how could consumer wearables be used to inform clinical decisions? Atrial fibrillation is the most common abnormal heart rhythm and is associated with a five-fold increase in stroke risk. Fortunately, if it is recognised, it can be treated with medication. However, AF is often not recognised as it can occur only intermittently and without symptoms. Consequently, detecting AF is an ideal clinical application of wearables. Wearables could provide added monitoring to detect an otherwise underdiagnosed disease, which can be treated to hopefully improve health outcomes. Atrial fibrillation can be identified from the PPG signal by assessing the regularity of beat-to-beat -beat intervals. In a normal rhythm, the beat-to-beat -beat intervals are fairly consistent. In contrast, in atrial fibrillation, the beat-to-beat -beat intervals are highly irregular. Potentially, a consumer wearable could be used to identify possible AF episodes in this manner. Indeed, the potential utility of an Apple Watch to identify AF was recently assessed in the Apple Heart Study in over 400,000 individuals. Key results included a reassuringly low alert rate, a high positive predictive value of alerts, and a much longer monitoring time than could be achieved at scale in clinical practice. In this study, Possible AF episodes prompted further monitoring using the gold standard of an ECG-based wearable in order to confirm a diagnosis. The recent addition of ECG sensors to wrist-worn wearables means that potentially they could be used to not only identify possible AF, but also to prompt the user to take an ECG measurement, which could be clinically reviewed to confirm a diagnosis. Infectious diseases such as influenza and now COVID-19 have a profound impact on morbidity and mortality. Information on the spread of infectious diseases can be used to direct healthcare resources, plan public health interventions and potentially even provide early warning to individuals that they may be infected. Recently, the potential benefits of using Fitbit data to track influenza-like illnesses were assessed using at least 60 days of data from almost 50,000 people in the US. An elevated resting heart rate and increased sleep duration were used as markers of disease. The study found that the inclusion of Fitbit data improved the performance of disease prediction models, which could help ensure timely responses to reduce further transmission. The potential benefits of wearables for identifying COVID-19 have also been assessed. The inclusion of data from consumer wearables in COVID-19 detection models 
was found to improve performance beyond that of using symptom app data alone. In addition, data from smartwatches has been found to aid pre-symptomatic detection of COVID-19. Several parameters were used in these studies, resting heart rate, sleep duration, step count, and the heart rate to steps ratio. In the future, early warning systems could integrate wearable data, self-reported symptoms, and electronic health record data, providing both population level and individual level surveillance. I've described a couple of exciting applications of wearables for health monitoring so far. Time would fail me if I were to describe all of the potential applications. So here is a list of applications to look out for in the future, and references to a couple of publications under review which describe them in further depth. So, what needs to be done to realise the potential of wearables for health monitoring? In my view, there are a series of next steps. Firstly, wearable devices will continue to be optimised to provide the best possible signals for analysis. Recent innovations include using different wavelength LEDs during different activities, as PPG signals acquired at different wavelengths have different strengths and weaknesses, and using multiple LEDs in a single sensor to acquire multiple PPG signals with which to improve the signal to noise ratio of a final composite PPG signal. Secondly, signal processing algorithms must be robust to provide accurate and precise parameters. Training datasets are invaluable for developing algorithms and should contain wearable signals alongside reliable reference parameters measured in the target population and the target setting. Thirdly, analytical techniques must provide clinically useful information. For instance, in the Apple Heart study, notifications of an irregular pulse were only raised if at least five out of six consecutive measurements exhibited an irregular pulse, thereby reducing the false alert rate. Fourthly, wearables need to be tailored towards the target users, particularly as those who may benefit most from wearable monitoring are not necessarily those who currently use wearables most. We need to understand what motivates people to use wearables and ensure they are designed accordingly. Finally, and most importantly, specific clinical applications should be identified in which wearables could contribute to improved patient outcomes. Usually, such applications involve either identifying an under-recognised disease or providing monitoring in a setting where it would otherwise be impractical. Here are some helpful resources accompanying this presentation. At this website you'll find datasets which I've used in research into wearables, signal processing algorithms, presentations including this one, and publications. I'd like to thank you for listening, thank my colleagues for their valuable input and guidance as we've been developing our understanding of wearables, and my funder, the British Heart Foundation, without whom this work would not have been possible. I'm always pleased to hear from others. Do feel free to get in touch. To conclude, consumer wearables now have a wide functionality. Clinical applications are emerging, including detecting atrial fibrillation. And when used clinically, wearables should be like a harness. They should be highly reliable and for specified purposes. Thank you.